Hey guys, so I'm here with you to bring you another little watercolor postcard. Um, we are doing hashtag love summer art. I hope you're enjoying all the different videos that you're watching and you're having a lot of fun. If you don't know about hashtag love summer art, go up to your YouTube search box, type hashtag love summer art in there and a whole bunch of videos are going to show up. So we did a floral last time. This time I thought we would do one more and we would do a little seascape. Um, I do lots of seascapes. If you haven't seen my channel before and you're new, um, I do lots of little watercolor seascapes. I thought we would do another one. I actually have an inspiration photo that my daughter took. Let's see. In here somewhere. Let me find it. Okay, she's taken a couple of them, these, these two, and they're both from La Selva Beach, California, which is near Santa Cruz, for those of you who don't know. So I'm going to prop this up over here, and I'm going to use these two photos as inspiration. I think I'm going to try to do the one with the peace sign written in the sand, which I think would be cute, So, and which is really just water and sand. So let's give that a shot. It would be a little bit challenging, and if I can do it, I think it would make a cute postcard. All right. What am I going to start with? I think I'm going to start with, as always, the water. I am going to use, I like my water to be a little bit more turquoisey, although it's kind of a cool color in these photos. I'm going to start, I think, with the cerulean blue. Mm, yeah, I think I'm going to start with cerulean blue. Maybe a little bit of ultramarine thrown in there. Was a lot of ultramarine. <laughs> it's okay, we'll make it work. So I'm going to start up here at the top with my watercolor, which is a little dark, but that's okay. I'm intentionally skipping over some parts of the paper, and because I want to leave them white, there's a lot of sea foam in the picture, and with watercolor, you, you could go back over it and paint in the white with some white acrylic or the Chinese white, um, but it's a little more challenging to try to leave the white space and have that sort of work for you and indicate the, um, the sea foam. It's hard to paint and talk at the same time. Do you guys have that problem? <laughs> All right, I'm going to darken up a few. That Because this paint's wet, when I add this other, this darker shade of the blue, it's going to go ahead and bloom and blend in with what's already on there. It's going to take the easier road and it's going not going to spread necessarily to the dry paper, but it's going to follow the water and bloom and blend with what's already there. Okay, I kind of like that. So I'm going to, let's give it a quick dry before I do anything else. So I want to add some really dark colors into the ocean. It looks like there's some dark sandy gray tones where sort of I think the sand is washing up into the water. In the photo, I'm going to re-wet some of these dark tones I have on my blending palette. This color in particular I think will work well. So I'm going to follow along these areas where there's already sort of a dark line and that will work for me and I can change that into that spot like in the photo where the where there's the darkness and I can sort of follow along there goes my phone again what's with my phone when I turn trying to watercolor with you guys now keep in mind we can go back and add some Chinese white but we want to be able to do that at a minimum right I like that. Okay, so now we're going to take some of that same color or close to that same color and we are going to start with our sand. 
we're going to run it across the edge around the edge of where we have this blue watery color but we're not going to quite meet the the blue color we're going to leave a white space again because we're trying to indicate some of that sea foam we're going to come in here with some water right behind so that that paint hopefully will start to bloom and blend to add more color down here. I'm going to try to mix more of a similar color. I'm going to take some Payne's Gray. And a little burnt umber. Well, that's pretty good. Remember when you're watercoloring that your paint will always dry lighter than it shows. I'm sorry you guys about the telephone. I'm going to take this dark paint and I'm going to put, first I'm going to dry this. <laughs> I was going to do something else, but let's put some more of this on here. Let's make our sand a little darker. Okay. Okay, so now we are going to try to put our peace sign in here. I didn't want it to bloom and spread too much into the surrounding color. And I am going to, let's see, try to draw it in the perspective that I see it in in the photo. Or at least close to. Again, it doesn't have to be exact, and I'm going to go in with just some water next to the paint I just put on. Darken up a few areas. Okay, I like that. Let's dry it again. going to go in with some Chinese white in a minute. Um, first I want to go in with something a little darker there and I've got this color on here on my palette so I'm going to use what I have on here. I'm going to darken up a few spots on the peace sign. Let's 
is nice. I like that. I want to bring some turquoise color back into my ocean a little bit. So this is cerulean blue. And then water. Okay, more heat to dry it. here with some white. Some watercolorists will tell you that it's cheating to go in with white. I don't feel that way. So I'm going to go in and add some more white. And this is going to really help you. Don't alternate between pushing down hard on your brush and lifting it up and just painting with the tip so that you get an uneven line. Because your sea foam, as you, if you can see in the picture, is not even. It's got some thin bits and some thick bits, and that's the way you want it to be. got my watercolor rinse water. I've got a dark side and a light side, so when I'm going in here with the white, I'm trying to keep the brush in the white side. So it's mostly clean water that's touching the Chinese white, so I get as white a color as possible. And like I said, if you feel like it's not white enough, you could definitely, you know, go in here with white acrylic paint. You could even go in here with a white gel pen, a white paint pen. You're just on vacation, you're playing, you're just creating some little postcards, whether you're actually on vacation and out of the house or you're just on summer vacation from school. You're just having fun and enjoying the process. There you have it. I actually like that. I'm gonna leave it, I think. Normally I add green grass or something to my um, seascapes, but I don't think I want to. I like the way that looks, so I'm gonna leave it. I am going to pop it off the block. And you'll notice, because I got it, I was heating it with the heat tool, that it loosened the glue up here in the corner. If you use a heat tool or a hair dryer on these watercolor blocks, that's, that can happen. So there you have it. There's another watercolor postcard. I go, hope it gives you some idea of what you can do with your summer art. Create some little postcards. You can definitely, this is on watercolor paper, so you can just write a message right on the back and put their name and address on there, put a stamp on there, and stick it in the mail. It's a little four by six uh, postcard. It's really cute, and I hope it gives you some ideas of what you can do. Play with your um, supplies, play with your mediums, just explore and have some fun. Don't forget to go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it and I'll see you later.